In sixth place in extemporaneous speaking from Schaumburg High School, Tom Forrest. In fifth place, from Richards, Allison Lonegro. In fourth place, from Oaklawn Community High School, Margaret Cole. In third place, from Wheaton Warrenville South, Samuel Nero. Your tournament runner-up, from Downers Grove North, Emily Temple Wood. And your 2012 extemporaneous speaking IHSA state champion, Eli Bernstein from Belleville West. It's become sort of a fearfully regular thing. My parents will plop themselves down on the couch and sit enraptured while the cast members engage in nefarious conniving acts, striving to win the prize while at the same time earning the votes of others. Occasionally there's some commentary, but really it doesn't matter that much. No, I'm not talking about Survivor, nor am I talking about American Idol. In fact, my parents are geekily enthralled with the Republican presidential debates. As I'm sure most of you are probably aware, there are currently, as according to a Christian Science Monitor article published on January 3rd, 2012, four major candidates remaining in the Republican race for president. They are as follows. Mitt Romney, Rick Santorum, Ron Paul, and unfortunately, Newt Gingrich. <laughs> yeah, he's still around. <laughs> However, the polls, which seemed increasingly to be pointing to Mitt Romney at the beginning of the presidential campaign, now have swung around quite a bit, with multiple candidates winning primaries in various states. This leaves American voters such as ourselves asking, if the election were held today, which Republican presidential candidate stands the best chance of defeating President Obama in the general election? The answer is clearly Donald Trump. <laughs> Unfortunately, I do have to be serious. And no, it is not Donald Trump. It is someone with a much better hairstyle. And that is none other than Mitt Romney because, well, for most of all, he's the most electable candidate that the Republicans have. But we can examine this general idea in three key ways. First, we must understand how the Romney campaign is not earning any Grammys, but is still rolling in the deep. <laughs> Next. Next, we must also understand how Mitt Romney is also the most prepared in terms of policy and experience to assume the Oval Office before finally examining how voters like us are more likely to choose Mitt Romney than anybody else. But first, as I mentioned before, the Mitt Romney campaign is certainly rolling in the deep, at least compared to his other Republican counterparts. That's because according to an Economist article which was published on February 16th, 2012, Mitt Romney's war chest, which is basically a term for how much money he has in his campaign, is far larger than any of the other Republican candidates combined. So if the election were held today, all Mitt Romney would basically have to do is splurge on all the millions of dollars that he's raised in order to win the election. In addition, however, this is as a result of the fact that Mitt Romney has one of the most well-developed campaign infrastructures of any Republican candidate. This can be seen in a New York Times article published on January 13, 2012, which stated that Mitt Romney's electoral campaign infrastructure is the most set to get out the vote. Now, according to my mommy, it's cold today, so I should wear a coat. Also, according to the Christian Science Monitor in the article that I mentioned before, also according to the Christian Science Monitor in the article that I mentioned before, a large majority of the United States electoral population is senior citizens. And when it's cold outside, senior citizens, and not me, certainly don't want to go outside and visit the polls. So how does Mitt Romney's electoral campaign infrastructure help him in this? 
Basically, Mitt Romney has enough campaign infrastructure to help a significant portion of the electorate to the polls, whereas Ron Paul, Rick Santorum, and Newt Gingrich don't have the infrastructure necessary to get those senior citizens to the polls. Guys, they care about their entitlement spending, and they're definitely going to go out to vote. But because Mitt Romney has the campaign infrastructure necessary to get them to the polls, he is the most likely candidate to win against Obama. In addition, however, we must also understand that Mitt Romney has developed a plan for the United States economy. And as James Carville, a former Clinton advisor, stated, it's the economy, stupid. That's what American voters care about. And so the fact that Mitt Romney has a 10-step economic plan, as according to a BBC article published on March 3, 2011, this sets him apart from other Republican candidates, who often as not are, as Rick Perry would say, relying on, um, uh, what was Rick Perry relying on again? <laughs> Mitt Romney is clearly the most prepared to take office. In addition to this fact, however, we must also understand that as pointed out in an Economist article published on February 12, 2012, Mitt Romney's experience as a venture capitalist at Bain Capital sets him apart from the other Republican contenders in the sense that he has experience working in that good old American capitalism. Mitt Romney knows what it takes to win money, to live the American dream, and certainly he may have some gaffes by betting Rick Perry $10,000, but in essence, we must see that Mitt Romney is the most prepared to take office. And with a majority of the electorate caring about their pocketbooks, it's clear that Mitt Romney has the most support, not only from Republicans, but also from the center of the population as well. And in this sense, we can also see that Mitt Romney is the most electable candidate. After all, have you seen the Urban Dictionary definition for Rick Santorum? <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't want to vote for that guy either. <laughs> Mitt Romney's more liberal stance to conservatism, his fiscal ideals, set him apart from the Republican candidates. Because although some may say that he has more flip-flops than a frat house at Mizzou, <laughs> I simply think that Mitt Romney is a man who knows how to change his mind and pander to the Republican demographics. In the primary race, as pointed out by a Christian Science Monitor article published on March 30th, 2011, Republicans all have to shift to the right. But if we take a look at Romney's past, it's easy to see that he has one of the more liberal stances. If you ever go on YouTube and you look up the Democratic National Convention videos, like this guy, yeah, I don't have a life, <laughs> you'll often find that the DNC is basically pounding Mitt Romney because they think he's going to be the nominee. And in their latest video, Mitt versus Mitt, it shows how Mitt Romney flip-flops on just about every single position. From abortion to same-sex marriages to the economy, it seems that Mitt Romney is to be considered a flip-flopper. However, at the same time, it's also crucial for us to understand that the majority of the American electorate aren't Tea Partiers. We're not die-hard conservatives, die-hard Democrats, or die-hard anything. A lot of people just make up their minds based on the individual candidate. So what we see here is that Mitt Romney is more appealing to the broad demographic that it would take to win the general election. Certainly, as an Economist article points out on February 2nd, 2012, he may not be the most popular among social conservatives, but this is about the general election. And Mitt Romney is clearly the favorite, as according to a recent Real Clear Politics poll, which averages polls from Rasmussen, Fox News, and CBS, in a matchup one-on-one -on -one against Obama, Mitt Romney stands at 48% with Obama at 52. You don't want to hear the poll numbers for the other Republican candidates. So when we re-examine the question, which Republican presidential candidate is in the best position to defeat President Obama if the election were held today, it's easy to see that the answer is Mitt Romney. First, we examined how exactly Mitt Romney's campaign has the infrastructure necessary to get the vote out, especially on a cold day like today. Next, we examined how Mitt Romney would also have the ability, the experience, and the policy expertise needed to inhabit the Oval Office, before finally examining how people recognize that as a moderate, Mitt Romney is certainly the most electable. At least among conservatives, it seems as though Mitt Romney is kind of like the prequels to Star Wars. You don't want Anakin to turn into Darth Vader, but, well, you know he's going to eventually. Just as if the Republicans want to win the White House, which is certainly not the Death Star, in 2012, they should pick Mitt Romney. <laughs>